Dale Black, President of Gamma Fishing. Today we're going to talk about what's unique about Gamma Fishing Line. What separates us from everybody else. Why you should use Gamma over anything else on the market right now. And it's, we have a very unique process that we do on the line. And here's a, here's a little bit of a demonstration or a picture of what we do. When line is extruded and drawn down, you get a long chain structure in the line. We break these chains down and incorporate more bonds. By incorporating more bonds, it allows us to create a line that's going to be stronger, more abrasion resistant, without having to give up the suppleness and the impact strength of the line, which are all either the, the characteristics of high strength abrasion, always fight impact strength and suppleness. So to get a line that's manageable, you have to give up one, one side or the other to draw the other one up. We don't have to do that. And that's what separates Gamma, whether it be our Polyflex, which is our nylon monofilament line, or our fluorocarbon line, whether it be the mainline edge or our, our finesse line, fluorocarbon line. That's what separates us from everybody else. Give us a try. I think you'll be very happy with the results. Okay. I have a question for you. Um, when you're, say, you're uh, using your fluorocarbon line and you're hooking up to, say, a spinner bait or a buzz bait or crank bait, what line do you use? that uh, what line to use for fluorocarbon that doesn't cut into itself because I know part of the problem everybody says with fluorocarbon is that if you use the wrong knot you know it cuts into itself and you have break offs. That's, that's calm. I don't, I've never been fond of the Palomar. The two knots that I really like to use, actually three, are the improved clinch knot, a San Diego jam knot which is a modified clinch, and then the, uh, I believe it's the double clinch knot where you run two lines through, you have three tag ends. Great knots, hook up real well with the fluorocarbon and you don't have to worry about it cutting itself. Uh, I also leave a little bit longer tag end because sometimes what happens with fluorocarbon is it likes to, as it's cinching down, pull itself through like a braid does. So I'll leave a little longer tag end, fish it a little bit to really let that knot seat and then I'll trim it off a little bit. Okay, now are there any other things that you could suggest to keep those knots nice and tight? Like do you wet the line a lot, oh, you smooth it? Make sure that you always wet the line when, you, when you're pulling a knot down. What it does is when you pull a knot down, if you don't wet it, there's friction and heat developed in the line. And you'll actually create a weak spot. And I found this out playing with the smaller diameter braid that you can burn the braid as well. Yeah. Eight pound, tie it, snap, snap. Oh my goodness, I got some bad braid. And uh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Tied it, I wetted it down, cinched right up. Cut it off the next day, same thing, and snap. What it does is that friction burns the line. You're not going to notice it when, when I never noticed it when I'm using 40 and 60 pound because I'm breaking it down, but I'm not exceeding that that break strength that I'm going to really notice. Mm -hmm. And so I went all my lines down real well. I try to make sure that I tie my knot so I'm not cinching it down over a long distance to reduce that friction that I'm putting in the line to make sure I don't create that weak link okay. between me and my fish. Another question I have is. What's the, the length of time that you can usually have, say, a, a spool of fluorocarbon on your reel? Is it uh, one season, three months, three weeks? All depends upon the make. I've actually had eight pound gamma edge on a rod over a year and a half. I do not change out line anymore. Basically, what the, the biggest drawback to lines is sun. And even our line will break down with the sun, but it's not going to break down at the same rate. So I keep mine stored right in my rod locker. The one rod I had in my garage, unheated, hot, cold, hot, cold, year and a half. The line fish like it did when it was brand new. As soon as I got right after I caught my first fish, got a little tug on it, fish great. Do you use any type of line conditioner at all? No, but if you're going to use one, Real Magic's not a bad choice. I know some of the guys there, and we've talked extensively about what it would do to the line and the test that Real Magic has done on the line and it does not degrade the line. So that's always been a concern of mine. I personally don't use it, but that's the one that uh, from talking with the guys, knowing what they do and how they test, that's the one I would recommend trying if you're gonna, if you have to use it. Okay, and then a question about your, uh, your braided line. What kind of lot do you usually recommend to use your braided line? Say you're gonna tie like to uh, just a, you know, to a jig fishing in heavy cover. I use the same knot. Double clinch. Double uh, clinch, you don't use double, a Palomar knot? Nope, don't like Palomar knots, I don't use it. I try to stick with the same knot through all my techniques. And what that does, it allows me to, to get into the habit of constantly tying the correct knot. So uh, the San Diego jam knot's one I really like to do. Uh, it's better than the cinch because you're winding down both lines instead of just one. Uh, the double cinch is, of course, five strands up through, tight. I use all three of those 
uh, mainly the San Diego Jam double cinch. The Crazy Alberto and Modified Albright are the, is the other knots I use for tying braid to fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. See, I'm using my fluorocarbon on one liter, like I do when I'm soft jerk bait fishing. I'll use that. That, that I got from a uh, gentleman named Chris Gorsuch, big fanatic in the braid and leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's what he uses, and I had problems with my blood knots not always performing the way I would like. Yep. And it's a small, low profile knot. Uh, mm -hmm. The guys on the tour are using it, Pete Lusick. Uh, He's, going to, he's at the Classic right now. He, he's the one that you know reassured me that I had the right knot because mm -hmm. that's one of the ones he uses in one more time. I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, that's the same mm -hmm. one I'm using. So uh, it really, when these guys are using it, you know they're on the right track. So. Okay, and I guess you, you have like fluorocarbon leader too. Is that something you'd use, like say, for example, saltwater fishing top shots, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, a lot of times you'll see the guys using our fluorocarbon leader material for uh, stripers, 20, 25 pounds. Uh, a lot of the Great Lakes fishing, the guys are using our 25, 30, and 40 pound, depending upon the Great Lake. Lake Erie, a lot of 25 fishing for walleye. Uh, you get over into Michigan, they're like the 30 and 40 to handle the salmon. And it's really freshwater fishing when you're flipping cover and you want that fluorocarbon leader material, 30 and 40 pound the guys are using. Uh, musky guys like using the 60 and 80 for a bite section. Yeah. You know, they get that real thicker diameter to handle. For the most part, the teeth, you can't always eliminate that, but you can try to handle it or manage it. Uh, but it's really great for that type of environment. It's designed for heavy impacts, large strikes on a short strand. Okay, I have one more question about you. Um, there's been a few like tests on places like Tackle Tour, and basically they've noted in their tests that gamma, uh, not gamma, but that fluorocarbon supposedly has this reputation on, of not having much stretch. Well, what is what is the the stretch characteristics of fluorocarbon, and what, does it come back to its normal shape, or what happens when you get stretch on fluorocarbon? Well, you get a high grade fluorocarbon will stretch. Low grade fluorocarbons, what can happen is you can stretch and draw down areas, weaker areas, that will actually change the diameter. But high grade fluorocarbons will stretch, not at the rate that nylon does. Nylon, you stretch it, you instantly feel that return, and you can watch it. Fluorocarbon will stretch, but the re return rate's a little different. It's a different material, so it has those different characteristics. Uh, you can draw down the line again by, you get a snag, you pull real hard. Mm -hmm. You overstretch it, you reach the elastic deformation point, and that stretches that line out, and it won't return. It just mm -hmm. stretches, and now you've created weak links in the fluorocarbon. But high-grade fluorocarbons are definitely going to carry uh, a more improved characteristics than a low grade. Low grade fluorocarbons really show off the bad characteristics, the elongation, the lower impact strength, the lower mainline strength, the poor knot strength. The more you move up in quality, the better those characteristics are going to be. Okay, and I guess uh, uh, the last question I have is but how could uh, anybody get a hold of you or go on the internet to research more about your, your stuff? You check out all of our stuff at www.gammafishing.com or you can just call the shop or email us. We love to get the questions. Our goal is to help <coughs> excuse me, help make your fishing better and they can reach us right at the shop. Alright, thank you very much. Thank you.